You sunbathing? You guys sunbathing? Yeah. Good morning. They love these sunspots. You guys want to go outside? Yeah, come on. <laughs> you go outside? Good morning, guys. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dina, and we're outside right in front of the garden. It is a beautiful day to be alive drinking a nice warm cup of coffee on this cool morning. It's warming up a little bit though. It's officially fall here in North Carolina, zone 7B. And I just wanna take you out here and show you what we've still got growing on in early fall. We still have watermelons, cucumbers, and some tomatoes, but I mainly wanna take you guys along to harvest one of these beautiful watermelons we have out here. Let's do this. So I want to show you guys these cucumbers I just harvested in our tunnel. We built that tunnel in January. I'll link the video below if you want to see that whole process from start to finish. I'm so thrilled to still be harvesting this many cukes in the fall. That's the main reason we installed the tunnel is for season extension to start them earlier in the season and grow them as late as we can. And I'm going to see how far we can push it. We've got some pickling cukes and some china jade cukes. These are my favorite. They grow very long and they're much sweeter than an average cucumber. And then we've also got some burpless varieties. They're getting pretty big out there, but I'm, I'm so excited to still be snacking on these. It's definitely one of my favorite things to snack on throughout the day. Good hydration, good nutrients, and they keep you pretty satiated too um, for, for a snack without feeling too full, you know what I mean? This is some eucalyptus that I've clipped from our giant eucalyptus tree. I'll be sure to throw in some shots of that, but our eucalyptus tree is so big. If you saw my last video, it's, it's even taller than before. I like, I could throw Christmas lights on that thing and just use that as the tree, but so happy about these cukes. Something else I wanna show you real quick before we get that melon is this volunteer tomato plant. We've had some volunteer tomatoes grow right here at the edge of our concrete on our back porch the past few years and we always let one grow and train it to span out like, like giant phoenix wings on each end. But this thing is so gorgeous. This is a Sweet 100 cherry tomato. Look at these fruit sets on this thing. Woo! It is so beautiful. But just something super cool that we started a few years ago and kept going. I love volunteer plants. And the Super Sweet 100 usually grows into November until we get that first frost. And it is uh, a hybrid variety, so it's super disease resistant. And it's just one of my favorite tomato plants to grow and snack on. I can hardly bring in the harvest inside because me and the dogs love to snack right off the plant. And that's one awesome thing about having it right here on the patio is it's just constant garden snacks.
As promised, I'm going to grab one of these watermelons down here. You got to be careful with your watermelon patch not to step on the vines because that will kill the whole plant usually. And so I just try to step in between. Uh, what I found is the dogs, I try to keep them away from the middle of the patch, but they are not as detrimental as human uh, footsteps on killing the plant. So I found that my dogs can kind of walk through without uh, too much damage. So I think we're gonna get this guy right here. The main way that I know it's ready is to knock on it. That sound, it sounds more hollow when it's ready to be picked. And I encourage you to knock on your watermelons throughout the whole grow process so you can hear that difference of when they're small to when they're ready to go. And also the tendrils are a great indicator to let you know when it's ready. Now you wanna find the closest tendrils and see that they're dried up. And that's also a great indicator that your watermelon is ready. And the last thing you can do is to turn it over if it's got that yellow spot, that's another sign that it's good to go. But like I said, I like to knock on them and I think that is the number one indicator. Number two being the tendrils and number three being the spot. But you just learn as you grow. I've been growing melons for three or four years now and you just get better and better at slicing them open at the right time. You, It only takes a few melons that are unripe for you to be more patient about picking them. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip it right here and we're gonna bring this baby in and slice it open. I know I just said bring it in. I just meant bring it into the yard a little bit. So we're about to slice this open. My favorite way to slice a melon open is with a machete. So let's do this. It smells so good. Got my spoon <laughs> ready to go. Try this baby out. This is a Jubilee melon. It's got pink flesh and are super sweet. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's like already chilled from the cool evening. So it feels like it's already been sitting in the fridge. That is amazing. Mm. I don't know if you can see all that juice in there. Let me tilt the camera for you. Can you see all that juice? My goodness. So good. Give the dog some. Cross. Willie. Willie, you want to? 
want some watermelon? Come here. Willie's over there rolling in the mulch. Willie, you want some watermelon? Come here. Oh my goodness. Mmm. Didi, Didi. Didi's helping herself with this other one. Diva, 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 Diva. Hey, 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 hey. So good, they can't help it. So we're gonna bring this inside now. Didi, Didi, I'm gonna give you some more, okay? Thank you for tuning in, guys. I can't wait to harvest the rest of these melons and enjoy them into the fall. Oh my goodness. Oh, please share this with somebody who might find it useful or fun. And until next time, guys, keep growing.